Welcome to this talk about uh, IU 3G testing uh, of Osmo MSC SGS and HNB GW using TTC and 3. So uh, I yeah, somehow couldn't find more acronyms to fit into the title of the presentation. Um, my apologies for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I only have 29 slides, but I also only have 30 minutes and not 45. Um, yeah, so the Osmocom TTC and 3 test suits, uh, some of you know, we developed uh, quite a number of test suits in the 2017-2018 uh, time frame. Uh, we compile them to executable code using Eclipse Titan, um, where we just use uh, the command line uh, compiler and make files to uh, build this and um, you don't need any IDE or Eclipse or whatever for that. Those tests, they run containerized in Docker and we execute them by our Jenkins continuous integration. Um, as uh, if you've uh, followed this a bit, also know um, the tests that we run normally, or at least uh, if they run how we intend uh, to run them, they test only one particular network element, so we only test the BTS or the BSC or the MSC or the SGSN or whatnot, and we only test the external behavior on both 3GPP and non-3GPP interfaces, so that means a, G, B, I, U, uh, in this case now, but also V, T, Y and, and other interfaces. Um, we also don't use the Osmocom C code uh, as uh, the, the protocol implementation, um, so we test against another um, implementation. Um, well, okay, I'm going to skip um, some of the slides here, why we did that. Um, now, if you look at SGSN tests um, so far, uh, as they run um, today or until today, uh, we have external interfaces, only the GB interface, which is uh, the protocol to the PCU, um, the GP interface, which is the GTP protocol-based interface to GGSN. Uh, we have the GSUB, which emulates the HLR in our tester. Um, and we have VTY-related uh, interfacing in the tests. But we don't have any 3G-related testing. So the typical test case looks like this. We have the SGSN on the one hand side, and we have these three interfaces that we attach to. Well, actually, uh, GB, GB, just, uh, yeah, GSUB is not just a missing arrow here. Um, and we have the abstract test suit, the SGSN tests, CDC and 3. Um, now, if we look at A versus IU interface, what's so different about testing IU? Um, in theory, it should be almost identical, uh, since um, there's a very uh, large similarity between uh, IU and A. Uh, both use SCCP connections per subscriber radio channel. Both encapsulate the same layers. Uh, the same layer three. Yeah, somebody has rang. Yeah. yeah, this is this is probably about our dinner that gets delivered. So somebody has to. Ah, okay, okay. Um, yeah, so um, both encapsulate the same layer 3 DTAP messages um, uh, between the UE or MS uh, and the MSC or SGSN, and there's more or less a one-to-one -one mapping between BSS map and RAN app. So in BSS map, we have a complete layer 3 info, which becomes the initial UE message on, uh, on, on RAN app. On, and the assignment becomes a wrap assignment, the clear becomes IU release. Also, note the uh, enormous difference of using entirely uppercase uh, statements and camel case uh, on the other hand side. Um, but in practice, things are a bit more complicated than uh, that. And that's the A interface and IU. So that's the circuit switch side uh, to begin with. Um, to just compare, let's revisit the protocol stack. So this is our typical control plane stack uh, for a circuit switch, right? We have our LabDM here, RSL blah, and uh, RR terminating the BSC, and mobility management and call control go through all the way to the MSC, where we have that nice uh, protocol stack here. I mean, we of course speak it over M3OA rather than the classic E1 interface, but uh, it's the same stacking nevertheless. If we look at, if we compare that with IUCS, and we only look at, uh, we colorize what Whatever has changed, these are the bits that have changed in the protocol stack from 2G to 3G. Um, which means basically on the MSC, that which we want to test, only the BSS app part has become ran up. The underlying stack is the same, the protocols on top are the same. Um, so the, normally you would expect it's super easy to, uh, to uh, also test the IU uh, CS interface on the MSC. Um, What's now special about it, it's uh, specified in ASN1, um, not a human readable text uh, uh, tables uh, format of uh, the traditional uh, GSM specs. 
and it reuses rather advanced features of ASN1, which is information object classes, and it makes very heavy use of them. So it doesn't only specify a type or, let's say, a, a message and a message with information elements, but no, each information element gets wrapped in an information element container, and then you have a message type specific list of permitted information element containers, and then the entire message gets wrapped in another container, and then, yeah, so you have some containment there. Um, and um, it uses also an encoding that I think nobody really outside of 3GPP uses, uh, which is align packet encoding, uh, packed, not packed, packet, but packed uh, encoding rules. Um, and uh, Ericsson didn't release uh, any of the related protocol module for IU like they did for A, uh, which made our life rather easy on the A interface side in TTC and 3. So um, there's an very nice relationship between TTC and 3 and ASN1 is that both are specified or originate at ITU um, and they have some similarity um, which means that TTC and 3 spec actually says you can natively use ASN1 files so you don't in order to speak or to in to interpret information objects or uh, structures or whatever you might call them uh, data structures uh, in TTC and 3 you don't even need to do any translation or whatever of the ASN1 file you don't even need to translate it into TTC and 3 like normally if you want to use ASN1 uh, data structures let's say in Erlang you compile them to Erlang or if you want to use them in C++ you compile them to C++ and so on but in TTC and 3 you don't even do that but basically there's a one to one mapping between an ASN1 language construct and a TTC and language construct so you can natively use ASN1 data type and uh, so on in TTC and 3, which is really nice. Uh, so uh, you can just blindly use all the data types defined in, in ASN1 uh, files and uh, use them. Um, there's some exceptions though, there's some name mangling because uh, a minus or a hyphen or dash is not permitted inside a type name in TTC and 3, so all dashes are replaced with underscores. So you look at the ASN1 file and the data type is called ranap dash pdu, then you have to, in your code, you have to write ranap underscore pdu. Um, and there's some other rules, but they don't, they mostly don't, uh, don't matter at that point. Um, so uh, now Eclipse Titan, which is a specific implementation of TTC and 3, but it doesn't implement all of the spec. So um, Eclipse Titan can parse the RANAP ASN1, which is nice. So I just copied the ASN1 files from Wireshark uh, because I had Wireshark Git tree cloned anyway. Um, and uh, you can just add the ASN1 files next to the TTCN files when you call the compiler. It's just like source code to it and it just uses it and it generates C++ code and there's no intermediate uh, TTCN uh, file generated from this. Um, which is elegant if you think of it conceptually but actually it makes your life quite a bit harder because you now have to sort of use data types in TTC and 3 for which you do not have a TTC and 3 like header file or a, a record or whatever definition of how that data type looks like. So you have to mentally do that translation between how does it look and how does it specified in the ASN1 side and how do I actually need to name my, my vari not the variables but the field names and, and that kind of stuff. Which would be simple if the ASN1 file is simple but with all this nesting and the nested information object classes and the containers it becomes rather hairy. Um, so what I actually do sometimes is I read the generated C++ code to understand how it's going to be called in, uh, in, in the TTCN side. But there's also another nice hack that I found uh, how to actually do this. The one big disadvantage is that uh, the Titan implementation only supports basic encoding rules and no aligned packed encoding rules. So now we have the problem that the ASN1 can be parsed and we can write and use all those data types, but how do we deal with this um, uh, packed encoding rules? So what we need to do is we need to do transcoding, not in the media gateway, but in our test, and not between voice codecs, but between um, ASN1 encoding rules. And uh, what we need is a transcoder that parses RANAP encoded in aligned packed encoding rules and outputs it in basic encoding rules and vice versa. Um, and what kind of tool do we use for that job? So. Um, the ASN1C that we use for our libosmo, uh, no, libiu client or whatever it's uh, called, lib, uh, libosmo iu, I think, no. Anyway, for, for our CE code. Um, 
it doesn't really fully support the version that we use. It doesn't really fully support all these ASN1 constructs. So we do not end up having one root data type where we can just say, well, here is a blob, transcode it to an abstract representation, and then re-encode it in another format. Um, also, the mainline ASN1C doesn't support all the features required for that because it still doesn't have APR support. Um, and also, of course, we, it's always good if your tests don't use the exact same code than uh, your implementation under test, because otherwise you have the same mistake on both sides and you run into problems. You could use the Erlang, uh, but then yeah, you would need to run an Erlang VM next to all our TTC and 3 tests. Yeah, you can do it, but somehow another level of complexity that I didn't like. Um, and one option that uh, is also exists is that you simply use, a, a, if you have access to it, of course, a proprietary ASIN1 compiler, and we link to a, a, a library. So the proprietary ASIN1 compiler generates uh, some code, and then you link that code to just do the transcoding uh, between AVR and PER. And that's what I did. It's called libffTranscode. I think it's sort of funny because FFA is in one is from Fabrice Bella, like FFmpeg, and FFmpeg is doing all kinds of transcoding of video, and now we have a lib FF transcode that does nothing to do with video. Um, um, but um, so it's a, it's a binary only shared library that uh, we compile at Sysmocom because we do have a license for that compiler. Um, we cannot share the source code to it. Um, but since it's only for our tests um, and it's a very well-defined functionality with a clean API, there's no question of uh, you know, linking against uh, uh, other software or license-related questions because you're literally only translating data uh, between two different formats um, using a, a very clean API. I think it has exactly three symbols exposed, this library. Um, and uh, we then... Um, implement their RANAP, RUA, and HNBAP, which are the three protocols that we deal with in 3G. Um, but uh, this can be extended. Actually, yesterday, uh, during one of the talks, I did that extension already. So we already have S1AP, or at least my version uh, uh, has S1AP inside. So we can use the same strategy for uh, LTE-related protocols where the same problem exists um, in the same library. And it's actually rather small. So for uh, these three uh, ASN1 standards, uh, so these three HTTP specifications in ASN1, RANA, RUA, and HMWAP, which if you've ever looked at them, this is like tons of uh, uh, ASN1 code, and we generate I don't know how many megabytes of C code uh, using ASN1C. Um, the uh, entire library is, I think, about 300 kilobytes or so in, 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 in object size. Uh, and the Debian package uh, compressed down is 50 kilobytes, the binary that you have to install. So just uh, so much about the, uh, how can I say, the, the ingenuity of how uh, FFAs and 1C deals with these problems uh, without generating tons of code or using tons of resources. So um, now that we have this, or we think that we have this transcoding library, how do we write the templates? As I said, we don't have the TTCN file to actually look, uh, um, uh, see the data types and, and then build them. Um, well, of course, we can just use a pcap file and run these pcap, the, the payload of those pcap files through the decoder, and then in the log file of TTC and 3, we will see the decoded abstract representation, and then from that we can uh, build templates. Literally copy and paste them and build templates from that. Um, Okay, well, this is uh, what you get when you try to do that. So it tells you expecting uh, two tag mismatch received universal 16. So somehow um, Eclipse Titan cannot parse the BER that is generated after the transcoding process. Um, so the proprietary ASIN1 compiler parses the APER, translates it to BER, and then you feed the BER into Titan, and Titan says, this does not reflect my understanding of basic encoding rules for this ASN1 syntax. Um, I gave up at that point about six months ago um, when I said, well, okay, I look at some other problem now. Um, I don't feel like investigating that. I did this again in April this year um, and debugged further and I could actually make it work somehow with a hack uh, in the runtime library source uh, that's uh, proprietary again. Um, but the other direction requires a fix in the compiler, and actually it is uh, was a bug in FFAs in 1C. Luckily, uh, even though uh, there is no support contract and the product is no longer sold publicly, FFAs in 1C, and we bought it seven years ago, still we got an update from Fabrice. So 
Um, thanks for that. So now we have a, a working uh, transcoding library and um, uh, the strategy of running the uh, APR through the transcoder into TTC and 3 to get the abstract representation and using that to generate temp or to write templates has worked. Um, now we need to integrate that into the existing test suits. Um, a lot of what they test is layer 3 DTAP anyway, so um, like an authentication test or a location update test of course is uh, more or less the same. Um, uh, so the question is how do we reuse them uh, without changing or copy pasting all the existing test cases. And um, so one thing I did is I generalized what we call the BSS app emulation into RAN emulation. So the changes look like this uh, if you look at the actual um, uh, diff. Um, uh, rather simple, so now uh, it's a RAN adapter and not a BSS app uh, uh, function and the RAN adapter is generalized for those both sides. Um, and um, we also have a rename um, from the codec port, so there is now, uh, or actually it's a copy, so we have a BSSAP co uh, codec port and a RAN app codec port, and the RAN adapter on top abstracts these things away, and there's a new configuration option by which you can choose for a given RAN adapter whether it should run IUCS, like we already could choose whether it should be A over IP or SCCP Lite um, so far. And then um, there's some magic that connects it to the right ports. And in the end, um, how does this look in the test case? Well, for all this layer 3 PDUs, you don't have any change. You just send your DTAP uh, or receive your DTAP from the ports. But all the things that are BSS map or RAN app specific, you need to differentiate. So here we uh, is a function that expects a clear on the, on the A interface. And originally, we just uh, invoked this alt step about um, the clear command. And now, basically, we say, well, we have a, a guard condition. If it, the RAN is JRAN, then we call the old one. And if the RAN is not JRAN, then we call a new alt step uh, uh, that basically handles the respective IU translation. And since we have uh, quite a number of these functions, uh, it's actually rather nice to abstract that. So that's the receive side. And on the send side, we have to introduce some function like this, like a function that sends a complete layer 3 or an initial UE. And depending on the, the RAN type, we either wrap the layer 3 in a BSS AP or in a RAN app message. Um, and then in the, in the actual test case, we just you know, do a, a bulk replace wherever we used to call complete layer 3. We, com we, we call this new function that then dispatches depending on the on, on this respective RAN layer. And um, so how do we extend an, uh, extend an, <laughs> extend an existing test case uh, to uh, 3G? Um, this is now an example um, of a, a real test case. So we had this uh, location update uh, IMSI reject test case where we basically say, well, we first create a GSUB expect, then we have this new function, complete layer 3 or initial UE, about this location update message, which we built up here. Um, then we uh, expect that uh, the simulated HR receives the GSUB message. We say, well, no, this is not permitted. And then we handle it and so on. And then this function is what we run inside the connection handler, and we have this actual test case. And what we have to copy is the test case itself to a new test case where um, we have some additional parameters that we add basically at the end of the f start handler function. So uh, if you compare here, the 3 is the suffix used for the IMSI, and I just said, okay, all the IU test cases get 1,000 ad added. So if you ever have an IMSI that ends with 1,000 plus something at the end, it was a 3G test case. It's pure convention. RAN IDX2 means basically I'm using the RAN connection uh, number 3. So there's 0 to, to 2. 0 and 1 are... Uh, like so, so far are A interface connections and uh, index 2 is the new um, IU connection. So basically from the test suite we, have, we simulate <coughs> two BSCs and one RNC connected to the same MSC and we can basically send messages here and there and uh, can also say well first you do something on this BSC and then it moves to another BSC and then you move to IU and you can basically uh, simulate those um, in parallel. It's a bit ugly that you need to basically copy that code. Um, but then on the other hand, um, actually I have a slide about this, no I don't. Um, 
then uh, we actually want the IU tests to show up as separate test case in our JUnit XML, and the only way to do this is by having another actual test case uh, object, let's say, in, in uh, TTC and 3, and you cannot create them dynamically, so you have some level of copy-pasting, and I think copy-pasting five lines for each test case is acceptable. And I put them always next to the, the, the A interface test case, so they are all grouped together, and it's, uh, if you do any changes, you see that Basically, this function is used by that and by that Would test case. Uh, microphone. Would it make sense maybe to separate them into se different files? Uh, that what I thought, but then the point is, if you do any change, then you have to touch multiple files. And here you say basically, well, this is the test case doing a location update reject case, and you anything that relates to the test case uh, is grouped together. And I thought that's more natural. Whereas uh, if you put it in multiple files, then you don't really, you do a change here and you forget that it's also used there. And but yeah, maybe it even makes sense to run them in separate uh, jobs even, just to have. You could still do that uh, by having a config file that lists only the IU test cases if you want to. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying this is the, the uh, der Weisheit letzter Schluss, uh, the whatever in English. <laughs> this is the, the, I'm not saying it's the best thing since sliced bread, but that's how I did it so far. What about the naming of BSC con handler? Um, actually, it is, uh, but this is just something inside the um, inside the MSC tests or TTCN only. So I changed all the infrastructure, but I didn't do any renames inside the actual tests itself. So all the infrastructure names have been generalized, but not the actual test cases. So the BSC con handler is actually a component type that's defined in MSC tests or TTCN, and yes, one would also or could also do a rename there, but it cannot be called a RAN connection handler because the RAN connection handler is already used by the generic infrastructure. Um, so you would have to say it's a um, maybe an access stratum connection handler or a, um, a BSC or RNC connection handler. But anyway, let's let's continue about the the naming uh, at some other time. Uh, so that was the easy part, and uh, this is all in a branch of mine, I, and uh, I'm merging step by step the stuff uh, into master, so we get uh, new test runs and see if all the modifications broke anything uh, on A, and then uh, soon we will have all those additional IU test cases running. Uh, at least in my manual execution, it looked quite promising, um, uh, and I was quite happy with it so far. Uh, now for the SGSN, um, that's unfortunately rather different because the A and IUCS are rather similar, but GB and uh, IUPS are rather different, right? In the GB interface, we don't have a CCP as a transport layer, and we don't have a connection abstraction per phone. There is no connection notion over the GB interface. It's a purely packet-based uh, transport. There is no connection abstraction. So to visualize this, this is again the um, 2G um, packet switch control plane protocol stacking, which by the way, the, the tool for doing this is Gnumeric. Uh, so I'm drawing these diagrams as a spreadsheet. Um, and, um, and I forgot to make a box here. <coughs> uh, so if we uh, switch over to uh, the 3G side and we look at the SGSN, we see many more pieces have uh, this uh, color background and hence are modified in the transition from uh, 2G to 3G than uh, it was the case for the circuit switch side. So suddenly we have to deal with protocols that we never had before. So previously the SGSN was all IP, UDP, and now we have to deal with SCTP, with M3UA, with SCCP, and then additionally also ran up in there. Um, so we have this concept of, well, we didn't have a concept of subscriber connection in 2G, and now we have it with 3G IOPS, um, and uh, there's not so much common infrastructure that can be shared uh, in the SGSN tests between the 2G and 3G tests. Um, and that's sort of where it stops, because it's still work in progress. I do have um, some... Uh, IU tests on the SGSN side already. I do have all the 
uh, the the RAN emulation, which includes the RAN app emulation, which includes the SCVM three way. So basically, all the infrastructure is there in the tests now, and I can send uh, basically RAN app stuff from the test to SGSN, and it parses and vice versa. But the actual, let's say, the the meat of the test cases is still uh, to be done there. But I expect less less sharing between the existing code and and that uh, in in 3G or in packet switched. Okay, um, that was the state of affairs. Um, yeah, I think there is not much other than some random links. Uh, so, does Erlang support this uh, aligned packet encoding? Yes, Erlang supports it. So somebody could write a libffTrans code that would, for example, uh, connect to an Erlang like daemon that runs, uh, and you just send all the messages there, and it responds back. So you have a very small C library that you link into uh, the test suite, and uh, you just uh, have this daemon doing the transcoding using Erlang. Um, interestingly, Erlang couldn't immediately parse the ASN1 files that Wireshark ships, but I think that's rather a problem with the ASN1 files uh, than Erlang. But I, I don't see any restriction there. I just thought, let's not create such a big dependency. So this libffTrans code is available as a Debian package, a binary Debian package uh, for Debian 9, and our build slaves and the Docker images pull it. Um, it's not nice that we have a proprietary component, but as I said, it's just for the test suite and all the alternatives seem a lot of effort. Um. Um, why now is it to attract more users or just for completeness sake or did you have too much time on your hands? <laughs> um, well, why, why now? The point is, uh, why, why do we still not have it yet? Um, and uh, as I said, I already put it aside once after being too frustrated with the problems and it needed to be revisited. And why now? Well, uh, we have also some rather large changes happening uh, both in, in the MSC right now and uh, it looks like we have rather large changes in the SGSN in the near future. Um, and uh, the only way to ensure that we don't break 3G completely is uh, to have some tests there. Um, and I'm not saying that the coverage will be great, but at least for all the, if we do all the tests in CS uh, that we do on 2G, uh, on 3G, that already is uh, quite a big gain. Um, yeah. So yes, ideally we would have had it a long time ago. And I don't expect that will attract more users, but I just expect that it will help us to maintain uh, a uh, a level of quality at all. We don't break it every day that we yeah. Maintain an IU level of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, uh, two more things. I wanted to put this on a slide. Maybe I put it. I forgot it. Um, it I already solved a couple of problems in our IU code, uh, uh, not actually by executing tests. Or not actually that that the new tests have found something, but just by creating all this infrastructure, I ran into it. I ran into it. <laughs> um, um, and um, one of the problems was that the criticality was br wrong in in some of our information elements and quite a number of messages. So if you've ever looked at IU, every container, whether it's the message container, the PDU container, or the IE container, contains a criticality. And the spec very clearly specifies which information element in which message type has which criticality. And we probably did a lot of copy and pasting when we uh, wrote the message generation routines, and they had the wrong criticality at locations. And of course, since uh, the, the templates I'm using on, uh, in, in TTC and 3 are derived from the ASN1, the template would only match if the criticality is exactly what is specified in the spec and a lot of messages wouldn't match because we just set the criticality wrong. And there was one other topic which I forgot, but yeah, there was so some, some fallout already happened in a positive way. Okay, any more questions? No? <laughs> um, mm. Do I say it now or tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> well, that's something that... <laughs>
<laughs> okay, then since I think I still have uh, 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 three minutes. Um, so as I said, I added S1AP, the LTE uh, um, uh, protocol between the e B and the MME to the Transcode library. And interestingly, as opposed to all these previous interfaces that we have here, um, Etsy actually developed a TTCN3 test suite uh, with all kinds of tests, like hundreds of test cases for conformity testing of the S1 interface uh, in TTC and 3. So I have the hope that uh, with limited effort, and uh, I'll see how true that is at some point in, I don't know, the next months, to basically glue together this Etsy S1 test suite with the transcode library and make it all compile on, uh, on Titan. Um, and then one would have a rather comprehensive set of tests that one could run, for example, against next FECs MME, and I'm sure uh, that will also lead to interesting uh, results. And and uh, it's really nice that finally, from for LTE and onwards, uh, the test suits are published, whereas in all the previous uh, technologies, if at all, there are some human language uh, documents that say, oh, you should test like this and you should test like that, but uh, not like an actual test suit that you can execute. <laughs>